Welcome to my message as I talk about fight for your family. This is part of a series I'm doing right now called The Fight. And today we're going to talk about fight for your family. And so I want to welcome you to uh, this message. And as I said, this is part of a series we're doing right now uh, on The Fight. And the Bible describes life as a fight. And our key verse for this series is 2 Timothy 4, 7a, where the Bible says, I have fought the good fight. Here's the Apostle Paul. He's at the end of his life, and he summarizes his life. He summarizes his legacy in two ways. Number one, he says, life is a fight. Life is a fight. But he says, I fought a good fight. And I want to help you fight a good fight. And today specifically, I want to help you fight a good fight uh, when it comes to your family. And so I want to welcome you to this message. And today we're going to be looking here at Nehemiah uh, chapter 4. And in this series, I'm dealing with what I call six fight Bible passages. All the Bible passages, all the key verses uh, we're using for this series uh, involve the idea of fight or involve the idea of battle. And today we're going to look here in Nehemiah chapter number four. Now, I love the book of Nehemiah. Uh, I just love this book so very much. And here was a man, his name was Nehemiah. And and Nehemiah uh, was in a very, what I call, luxurious position. Uh, He was the assistant uh, to the king, and he had pretty much a, a life of what I would call luxury. But God spoke to his heart about going back to his homeland in Jerusalem uh, to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Now, the walls in Bible times were so important because they represented strength. They represented protection. They were very, very important uh, to any uh, city uh, during uh, that time. And here is Jerusalem. Uh, uh, and, and this is Nehemiah's hometown, and the walls are down. The walls have been destroyed. And God speaks to Nehemiah, and God commands Nehemiah to go back and to rebuild those walls. And here we come in Nehemiah chapter number 4, and they're at the halfway point in the rebuilding. You know, halfway is always a tough time in any uh, building project, right? I mean, you, you know, when you get started, you're all excited about the start of the building project, and at the end, you kind of get excited because you know you can see the end in sight, but when you're in the middle, <laughs> when you're in the middle of that building project, it can be mighty, mighty uh, tough, and that's where they are uh, during this time. And so today we're going to be looking at Nehemiah 4, uh, 6 through 14, Nehemiah 4, 6 through 14. And I want to begin by reading our key verse for this sermon, which is Nehemiah 4, verse number 14. And here Nehemiah gives what I call a rally cry. He steps up and leads And that's what leaders do. Leaders uh, lead, and and part of what they do is they they rally people to action. And Nehemiah is going to rally the people to action, and he's going to use their families to motivate them. So listen to what he says in Nehemiah 4, verse 14. Here the Bible says, And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the leaders and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. We'll talk about that today as one of our key points. Remember the Lord, the Lord who is great and the Lord who is awesome. And this is what he says, and fight, fight for your brethren, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Here the Bible is very clear. Nehemiah says, fight, fight for your family. Fight for your family. And one of the battles that matters the most is your family. I I don't know where your family is today, uh, but I can guarantee you this. There's some challenges going on. There's some difficulties going on. uh, There's some pain going on. And uh, and I want to encourage you uh, today uh, in this area. I thank God for my own family. And uh, God has blessed me with my wife, uh, Debbie. Uh, and we'll be getting ready to celebrate our 40, 
uh, third anniversary, wedding anniversary coming up here. Uh, and the God's blessed us with three children, uh, Crystal, uh, Sarah, and Jeremiah. And all three of them are married to awesome uh, spouses. And God's blessed us through them with nine grandchildren. And we thank God for our family. And listen, my family, listen, they are my first ministry priority. In fact, I'm not only their, their, my wife's husband and a dad and a grandfather, uh, I'm actually their pastor as well. And so I'm very blessed uh, to have them as part of the Capital Baptist Church uh, family. And so I hope today you're thankful for your family. So be glad, be thankful for the family that God has given uh, to you. Now, today, as we think about the family, the number one problem of the family today, and there are many problems, but I would say the number one problem in the family today is conflict. Conflict. There's so much anger going on uh, in our culture and specifically in our homes. And the Bible says in Galatians 5, 14 and 15, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So God commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves, and, uh, and you have no closer neighbor uh, than your own family. Neighbor not only is talking about, you know, as far as, you know, location, but it's the idea of those that are closest to you. It's not just that they live in close proximity, but they are close to you. And, and your family, I mean, those, those are your closest neighbors. And God calls us to love them. And the Bible says in verse 15, but if you bite and devour, devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. And the Bible here talks about biting and devouring one another, anger, okay, could summarize that statement. And the Bible says uh, that if you do that, beware lest you be consumed by one another. And so what it's saying is, if you fight with your family, uh, you're going to destroy your family. And that is, honestly, that's a lot of what's going on today. We're not fighting for our family, we're fighting with our family. We're fighting with our our family and say, I want to encourage you, don't fight with your family. Don't fight with your family. Fight for your family. This is what Nehemiah told the people to do. Fight. Fight for your family. And so yeah, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how to fight for your family. How to fight for your family. It's all going to be based on this story we see here in the Word of God. And the first thing is this, expect challenges. Expect challenges. we got to understand that our families are going to have challenges. And uh, in 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now notice it talks about Satan. Satan, the Bible describes Satan as our adversary, our opponent. The Bible says he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And let me tell you something, he wants to devour your family. Just, just take, a, take a moment here, let's, let's kind of be logical, okay? If you were Satan and you were trying to destroy a culture, which is actually what Satan wants to do, uh, he, he, he wants to destroy our culture. Uh, he wants our culture to be godless and, and to be far from God. Where would you start or how would you go about doing it? The answer is the family. The family. And the reason is because the family is the basic unit of any culture. Let me say that again. The family. The family is the basic unit of every culture. And so if you want to have a strong culture, you have to have strong families. And Satan doesn't want us to have a strong culture. He doesn't want us to have strong families. He wants to, uh, you know, erode uh, our culture. And so what he does is he comes against our families. He attacks our families. And so many of the cultural uh, woes that we have today are based on the breakdown of the family. So many things going on in this world. So many of the problems we have in our culture today are based on the erosion of 
the family. Listen, expect it. Expect challenges to come your way. And there's sp three specific I want to mention here. Number one, expect criticism. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. And uh, one device that Satan is going to use is criticism. In Nehemiah 4.1 it says, But it so happened when Sambalat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant. And notice this, he mocked the Jews. So Sambalat was one of the specific enemies uh, of Nehemiah that are mentioned uh, in the book of Nehemiah. He was very outspoken. He was a very outspoken opponent of Nehemiah. And the Bible says he heard about the rebuilding of the wall. He got angry. He got upset. And he began to mock them. He began to mock them. Let me tell you something. You try to live your life individually or as a family, you're going to be criticized. Okay? You, you are going to be criticized. Uh, the Bible says if we live godly in Christ Jesus, we will suffer persecution. And so, listen, honestly, the gray in our culture is, is, is kind of going away. Okay? <laughs> I mean, things today uh, are very black and white. All right? uh, and when you live for God, when you, when you live out family values for, for God, uh, you are going to be criticized. You need to understand that. Number two, expect fatigue. It's tiresome <laughs> to, to have a family, to build a family, and to take care of a family. It says in Nehemiah 4.10, Then Judah said, The strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Notice that statement, The strength of the laborers is failing. Why? Because there, there was, you know, again, they're halfway, you know, and, and, you know, in the middle of a building project, it's a mess, okay? It's all kinds of rubbish and all kinds of stuff going on here. You know, they're now halfway through building this wall. Can you imagine all the, the, the junk and all the, you know, all the, all the whatever, the building materials all around and, and things like that? They're tired. They're tired. And you know what? It's wearisome. Uh, to build a family, to take care of a family. And some of you are just flat out tired right now, okay? You're, you're tired uh, in your marriage. You're tired as a parent. You're, you're tired as, as even a grandparent, okay? It's tiresome. You just got to understand that. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of hard work to invest in your family. And, and you need to understand you're going to get tired sometimes. That's part of it, all right? And then another thing is expect anxiety. Expect anxiety. This is what I call device number three here. It's, it says that our adversary said they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So the, again, there are multiple adversaries. You know, there was uh, Sambala, there was another one called uh, Tobiah. The bias there was diff different ones, right? And these adversaries were coming against them, saying basically, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kill you, and we're gonna cause this work, this rebuilding of the wall, to cease. And notice what it says in verse 12. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us, listen to this, ten times, ten times. And what they say ten times, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Us from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. I, I mean, these people are afraid because I mean they've been threatened. They've been they've been told we're gonna we're gonna kill you. We're gonna we're gonna stop this wall from being built. And they are just saying it over and over and over and over ten times. It says, you know, a lot of times when we get anxious, I do. I'm sure you do too. You know, we just get agitated, right? And we just, a lot of times we'll just keep saying uh, the same thing over and over again or, or for sure thinking it, over, maybe we don't even say it, but it just keeps going through our mind because that's what anxiety uh, does uh, to us. And we have to understand that in the family, you're going to have anxiety. And the, I, I say the common denominator of Christian parents is fear, is fear. And the reason I say that is, you know, as a Christian 
uh, home, you, you want to see everyone live for the Lord, right? You want to see everyone serve the Lord. And, and we know there's a lot going against us for that to happen. And the natural tendency is to be anxious about that or to be, or to be afraid. And maybe today you're, you're a bit fearful. Maybe you're a bit afraid. You got to understand, you know, that is normal, but it's also part of spiritual warfare. And, and we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Just understand that you're going to deal with criticism. You're going to deal with fatigue. You're going to deal with anxiety. And Satan wants to use these things, these devices uh, to destroy your family. Expect it. Get ready for it. Okay. Get ready to be criticized. Get ready to be tired. Okay. Get ready to be uh, anxious. It's part of uh, having a family, right? Number two, pray with passion. Pray with passion. Now, one of the wonderful things about Nehemiah uh, is there's prayer mentioned uh, many times. In fact, I think pretty much almost every uh, chapter in Nehemiah includes at least one prayer. And here in chapter 4, it includes two prayers. Two prayers. And, and what we learn here is about the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer. And when it comes to fighting for your family, don't try to do it alone. Don't try to do it naturally. Do it supernaturally. And that means ask for God to help you. Request God's help. Here's what Nehemiah does. And, and he prays with passion. Key word there is passion. Nehemiah 4.4 4 says, Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their heads and give them as plunder to the land of captivity. Hear, O our God. I mean, I mean, Nehemiah prays with, with tremendous passion because they're being despised. They're being ridiculed. They're being made fun of. They are physically being attacked. Again, don't forget it. They're saying, we, we're going to kill you. We're, we're going to stop this rebuilding of this wall. And what does he do? Hear, O oh, our God. And then Nehemiah 4, 9 says, nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. We made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Let me ask you something today. Do you need to pray? Do you need to pray for your family? Pray for your family. Hear, O oh, our God. Just pray now. Hear, O oh, our God. And I love that. We made our prayer to our God. Pray for your family. Pray with your family. Pray. Seek the Lord. One of the things I do is I have a family picture, and, um, and I put that family picture at the top of my, uh, my Facebook profile. And, and what I try to do, and I, I'm not perfect at this, but I, I do quite well at it, okay? Pretty much almost every day, okay? Almost every day. Uh, I pull up that picture, and I go through and I pray by name and best I know by need for each family member. I need God to bless my family. I need God to bless my home. And I need God's help. And, and, and listen, your family needs God's help too. Pray for your family. Pray with your family. Take time to pray with your family. Pray together and seek the Lord. Because as the old statement goes, families that pray together stay together. There's a lot of truth in that statement. Families that pray together stay together. And when you pray, uh, see, think about it. When you pray, you get God's strength. You get God's love. You get God's comfort. I, I mean, so much comes through prayer. Pray do you need to say a prayer today for your family? Pray, 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 pray. Number three, put in the hard work. Put in the hard work. Hey, it takes a lot of hard work to have a great family. Nehemiah 4, 6 says, So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to the half its height, 
Notice this, for the people had a mind to work. Now, like I've said, they're at the halfway point, and, 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 and they're doing quite well. Okay? They, they've got that far, okay? and this is a, a monumental task. This is a mammoth task to rebuild this wall at Jerusalem, and they've made it halfway. Way to go. And, and, and Nehemiah says the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. Listen, nobody said, I want you to think about this, nobody said it was going to be easy to have a joyful marriage and train children to love God. Nobody said it was going to be easy to have a joyful marriage and train children to love God. It takes hard work. You have to invest in your family. You have to invest in your marriage. You have to invest in your children. Grandparents, I call on all of us as grandparents, invest in your grandchildren. Invest in your grandchildren. And, and listen, there's a couple of verses that mean a lot to me in this area. One in the area of marriage is uh, Proverbs 5.18. Both of these are in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 5.18 says, Let your fountain be blessed, and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Hey, God wants us to have joyful marriages. Not perfect marriages. None of us have perfect marriages. Uh, none of us have marriages without some, some conflict and without some, some uh, 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 disunity and things like that. Uh, that's that's going to happen in your, in your marriage. It's going to happen in your home. But you have to work at it, right? You have to work at rejoicing with your wife. You have to, you have to work at your marriage. You know, it's not just going to happen automatically to have a joyful marriage. You have to work at it. And then I love Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child. That is hard work. Training children is hard work. Uh, you know, I could, I could go into great detail here, but just basically just, you know, number one, you got to educate them, right? You got to educate them uh, in the things of God. You have to educate them in, you know, ABCs and, you know, and, uh, and uh, math and science and, and all that stuff, you know. They have to, they have to get some education, right? Uh, and, and then listen, discipline. This, you have, it, it takes a lot of effort to properly discipline your children and to discipline them in a way that will be effective and that will work. Hey, like we said earlier, you're going to face some fatigue. You're going to, you, you, you're going to get tired, okay? You're, you're, you're going to get tired. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, providing financially for your home is it, going to be hard. And, and I respect you for, you know, every day just getting out there and earning your pay to try your best to take care of your, your family. That's a, that's a noble thing to do. How to fight for your family? Expect challenges. Pray with passion. Put in the hard work. Number four, lead the way men. Lead the way men. Now notice what Nehemiah does here. Nehemiah 4.13a. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. So what did Nehemiah do? Nehemiah said, men, step up, all right? And, and what Nehemiah did was he positioned the men in the lowest part where the wall openings were. In other words, these are the spaces where the wall has not been rebuilt. And the, and the enemy is trying to attack the city and come against the rebuilding uh, of the wall. And what does Nehemiah do? Nehemiah puts the men right there. Men, step up. Step up and lead the way. You know, studies tell us that men have a huge spiritual impact on their families. Just look it up. Okay, there's, there's a lot of good studies out there on the impact of men and when men spiritually lead their families. Men, I want to encourage you. Step up. Step up. Number one, realize that God, listen, God's order in the home is for the husband to provide loving leadership. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.23a, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. You see, God is a God of order. 
This has nothing to do with uh, value. Men and women are 100% of equal value, all right? But God is a God of order. And God creates, and you know, he's created the church, he's created the, the workplace, he's created government, he's created the family. And in every institution he created, he established order, okay, a chain of command, if you will, in every one of those institutions. And in the home, the husband has a responsibility to lead, to be the head of the home. I didn't say dictator, okay? I didn't say dictator. I'm talking about being a leader, okay? Being a leader. And a leader does what they can to, for the best of the team, uh, of, the, of the family, okay? And, and, and I ask you men, step up and lead your family, lead your home, uh, and take the challenge of Joshua. Joshua 24, 15 says, And it seems evil to you to serve the Lord. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But notice this, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Men, lead the way. Let me tell you an area you need to make sure you lead the way with your emotions. With your emotions. Remember, we talked about the challenge is conflict, right? And our problem is we're not fighting for our families, we're fighting with our families. <laughs> and, and, and anger is a huge part of that. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not saying women don't get angry. They do, okay? But I'm telling you, as a pastor, I, I, typically it's the men that need to learn how to control their anger. And I like to put it this way. Be the thermostat in your home, not a thermometer. Now, what's the difference between a thermostat and a thermometer? A thermometer goes up and down, right? Up and down. A thermostat regulates the temperature. God has called the husband to love his wife. God has called the husband to love his family. We need to make sure we're keeping the thermostat nice and warm and toasty in the love area of the family. And part of that is controlling your emotions, being, controlling your anger, controlling your speech, controlling uh, your tongue. Men, be that thermostat in your home. Don't be a thermometer. Don't be, don't be all over the place and unstable. Be a thermostat when it comes to your anger and when it comes to your home. Number five, arm every family member with the Bible. Arm every family member with the Bible. Nehemiah 4.13b says, And I set the people according to their families, I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. What, what does Nehemiah do? Noah, Noah, Nehemiah uh, puts a sword in their hands. And, and I know that was a physical sword. Okay, I, I get that, all right? But for the Christian, uh, it, the Bible describes the Bible as the sword of the Spirit. In fact, the Bible describes the Bible, the Word of God, listen, is our greatest weapon. Listen, every family member needs to be armed with the Bible. It, it, the, the, the Word of God is our greatest weapon. It's the greatest weapon we have. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit Listen to this, which is the Word of God. The Bible talks about the Bible here, the Word of God, as the sword of the Spirit. And, 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 and we use that sword, all right? We use that sword to fight uh, the enemy. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not, what, sin against you. Arm yourself with the Bible. That means every family member needs to be reading the Bible every day day. Every family member should spend some time in the Bible, individually or corporately, okay? You do it together as well. And then also make sure you're bringing your family to church. Daily read the Bible. Weekly worship God together as a family. Come to a church like Capital Baptist Church where the Bible is being taught and, and listen, arm your family with the Word of God. We need to know God's Word to, in today's culture, perhaps like never before. And then, number 
6. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. As we close today, let's close with Nehemiah 4, 14 through 15. Here Nehemiah says, And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of them. The, the them, they, they are they're attacking verbally. They're attacking physically. They are doing everything uh, to stop the rebuilding of this wall. And Nehemiah says, listen, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. And I love his description of the Lord. He's great. He's awesome. Isn't that good? He's a, he's a great God. He, he's an awesome God. He is a great God. He's an awesome God. And, and he goes on to say, fight for your brethren, fight for your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. And he goes on to say in verse 15, and it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. What did God do? God fought for them, all right? God fought for them. And and, and listen, God stopped the assault. And they were actually able to go back and keep working on the wall. Let me say this. Don't quit on your family. Don't quit on your family. Don't don't quit on your marriage. Don't don't quit on your kids. I mean, keep keep at it. Don't don't stop. I mean, every marriage is going to have some ups and downs and difficulties. Listen, parenting it's hard, you know. Uh, one of my pet statements that I try to say a lot is your, your kids are going to bring you your greatest uh, uh, pleasure, but they're also going to bring you your greatest pain. You're, you're not going to ever have any, uh, this is my feelings, I believe it, I'm right. I don't think you're ever going to have any greater uh, joy on this earth than your, than your family. But let me tell you something, you're going to have the greatest pain and hurt in your family too. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Don't quit on your family. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And let me tell you something. God is for your family. God is for your family. You better know that. I'm talking about deep in your heart. God is for your family. He's great. He's awesome awesome. He will fight for you, okay? He will fight for you. You stay at it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep on fighting. Hey, listen, there's a lot of things you can battle for in this culture, but one thing I'm telling you we ought to fight for with everything we got is we ought to fight for our family. Don't fight with your family. Fight for your family.